to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute since there's been a video on here. There really is no excuse. I've just been a lazy mother As a lot of you guys know, I went on vacation in Cancun, Mexico a couple weeks ago for my five-year anniversary with Kang and it was so much fun and it just felt so relaxing. So when I came back, I was still in that vacay mode and it took me a while to get out of vacay mode and hence the lack of videos on here on YouTube and on Instagram and I do apologize for that but hopefully now I'm back and better than ever because I have a new setup that I love so much so I hope you guys kind of notice the changes in my content quality hopefully with my new equipment and my new setup it just makes the filming process a lot more efficient and honestly efficiency is so key because I feel like when my workflow is really nice and smooth I'm more motivated to continue to film continue to work but when things are just like it's so complicated to set up it's so complicated to clean up and it's so complicated complicated to sit down and edit like it makes me not want to do anything and so with that today I have this aqua green type of makeup look for you guys it felt really good to sit down and play with makeup again I haven't worn a full beat like this in so long so I really hope you guys like it I really enjoyed it I love how it turned out and like I said it's been a hot minute since I've touched color or done like a colorful eye and so this really just put me back into like my element and I feel really good today. So before I start rambling for five freaking minutes, I'm gonna cut this intro right here. Give it a thumbs up if you guys like my new background. And if you wanna see how to get this look, then just keep watching. All right, so I already did my brows off camera using my favorite, the Benefit Precisely My Brow in the shade number six. It's just always a good brow day when I'm using this. And then I went ahead and I set my brows with the new Milk Makeup Kush Clear Brow Gel and I just love this formula so much. I feel like it really hydrates the skin that's around my eyebrows and I have that problem with a lot of brow gels. They tend to dry out my skin but this looks beautiful and it just makes my brows look so clean. Next, I'm taking these e.l.f. Wake Up Multi Masks. These are such a wonderful invention. They're just like these little under eye gel pads kind of thing. And I like to apply them on my under eye while I do my eye makeup for two reasons. The first is to hydrate my under eye because I get really dry there. And the second is to actually catch eyeshadow fallout and so I just love that I get to kill two birds with one stone while I do my eye makeup and by the time I get to my concealer it's all ready to go. So for today's eye look, I'm actually going to be using two eyeshadow palettes. The first is the Kathleen Lights and ColourPop Dream Street palette and the second is the Alomar Cosmetics Volume 1 palette. This came in a boxy charm and I have to admit when I first saw it, I wasn't impressed but it was a whole nother story when I swatched it. The formula on these eyeshadows are so freaking bomb. I really underestimated them. So I used the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer to prime my eyelids in a Morphe E20 brush just to buff it all out. And then I'm going in with the first shade in the Dream Street palette. This is the shade Potion and I'm just using a Morphe M507 to lay it all on my crease. And then I'm going in with my next shade Magical as a transition. And I'm using the Morphe M441 just to blend it all out and get something going here. I really like the contrast between a warm crease and a cool tone aqua lid that we're going to add later. That's a really good tip if you're trying to play with cool tone colors. Try to make the crease a little bit warmer so that it doesn't look muddy. Next, I'm taking Water Bearer. It's this beautiful deep matte blue shade. I'm using the LA Girl Brush 203 to lay down this color. It is so pigmented as you can see. So I'm starting low and making my way up so that it doesn't get too crazy too fast. And I'm also making sure I'm going back in with the shade Magical to blend out the edges as I go along. And this right here is the fun part where you get to see the look start to come together. Using the shade Mermaid Boy on my finger, I'm just going to run it all over my lid. And as you can see, it's starting to make the look a lot more metallic. You could honestly stop there and still have a really beautiful look, but I'm taking the shade Celia from the Alamar palette because it is lighter than the Mermaid Boy shade and it has like these really beautiful green reflex in it. So I wanted to make it look a little bit more 3D. And I don't put this everywhere, I just kind of put it a little bit more in the center. And then I'm using this Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter in the shade Distortion. I really like this glitter because once again, it has like green reflex in it and I feel like it just makes my eye pop 
a lot more. I also focused it on just the center and then I'm taking Kaleidoscope from the Dream Street palette to highlight my inner corner with a Morphe E36 pencil brush. And to finish off this part of the eyes, I'm now applying some Huda Beauty Noel lashes. Um, I wish I could apply lashes that easily. I really didn't put them on. Taking a break from the eyes and moving on to my face, I'm using the Stila One Step Prime to hydrate my skin and prep my skin for makeup. Out of all the primers that Stila has, this one is probably my favorite because I love a good hydrating primer. And then surprise, surprise, I'm going in with my CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation in the shade L80. What can I say? I just can't get enough of this foundation. I'm starting with this Morphe E67 brush just to kind of lay down all the product and cover all my bases. Then I would go in with this LA Girl blending sponge. It's one of my favorite sponges, by the way, and just blend out all this foundation. I don't put a lot on my forehead. As you can see, I like to leave my forehead a little bit blank so it's not cakey looking. For concealer, once again, I'm going in with the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion. I'm in the shade 2W. You guys aren't going to see me use any other concealer for a while, to be honest, because I just freaking love this formula. It is so hydrating and just what my under eye needs. There's a little bit of creasing compared to Tarte Shape Tape, but honestly, nothing that can't be fixed when I pair it with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. It is the perfect combination, but today, instead of using that powder, I'm trying out the Huda Beauty Easy Bake. This is the new setting and baking powder. I was really excited to get this package in the mail. It comes in eight different shades and also a dual-ended brush that you could bake and blend with. And I'm in the shade Banana Bread. Now, I really like the packaging on the outside. I think it's really just sleek and simple and easy to carry. But I don't like the stopper that's on the inside because as soon as I pulled it out, the powder started to fly up everywhere. That's just me nitpicking. You guys can honestly just throw the stopper away like I did. But the product itself, my only issue with it is the fragrance. It has the same exact fragrance as her foundation. I have tried out that foundation and I ended up having to return it because I just could not stand the smell. It gave me a really, really bad headache. It's perfumey and everybody is different because when I gave my mom the powder, she said it smelled so luxurious and she loved it. The product itself, the powder itself has a really, really beautiful finish. So if you can overlook the smell or if you even like the fragrance, then you will love this powder. But for me, it's definitely a pass. For my contour today, I'm going in with the Koki Cosmetics Powder Contour Palette and I'm using a BH Cosmetics brush number three to run that along the hollows of my cheeks, my forehead, my jawline, you know, all that fun stuff. I wanted to warm up my skin a little bit more, so I'm taking this ColourPop Press Powder and it literally just says bronzer on it. I'm not quite sure if that's the name of the shade. I know that's not very helpful, but it's from ColourPop. I'm using an e.l.f. complexion brush, by the way, and then for blush, I'm using the LA Girl Cosmetics blush in Just Bear, and I'm using the LA Girl brush in 107. This is actually one of my favorite blushes ever. At one point, it was all I was wearing and all I took with me whenever I was traveling. Quick break from the face and I'm going back to the eyes with this ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Zulu. They have one of my favorite eyeliner formulas ever and I wanted to add kind of like this aqua blue type of pop on my lower lash line. So I went back into the palette and I took a shade I cannot pronounce, Vera. Darrow. I hope that's right. I'm just using a definer brush to run that right underneath my eyeliner. Then I'm just taking this L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara to finish off the eye look. And we're back to the face and we're on my favorite step highlighting with the Pixi Glowy Gossamer Duo. This is in the shade Delicate Dew. These are so stunning for the price point. I was not mentally prepared for the swatches. They were so wet looking, so metallic. It's very easy to build and gives me a dewy, wet looking finish. And to apply this highlighter, I'm using my ColourPop F5. I've really been sleeping on Pixie Beauty over here. I need to be using a lot more of their products. Last but not least, I'm going in with this MYOB lipstick in the shade Topless Beautiful Brown Nude. And that completes this entire look. <laughs> look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed creating it 
and like I said, I just really, really felt good playing with color, playing with makeup again, sitting down, filming, talking. I'm just starting to finally feel like myself again, and I'm feeling a lot more motivated to sit down and film more looks for you guys. At the moment, I feel like I'm a little bit more inclined to film a YouTube video versus an Instagram video because I truly feel like Instagram is a dying platform at the moment and although I don't have you know a million subscribers here on YouTube I feel like it's a fresh start it's a new change and I really like that please comment down below like what types of YouTube videos you would want to see I'm so open to anything like I don't want to confine it to just makeup I think that's probably the one um, thing I would kind of do all over if I started my Instagram page all over again I would want to be a little bit more multi-dimensional I don't just want to be Annie the girl who posts makeup tutorials like I want to throw in lifestyle I want to throw in like some funny challenge videos and things like that so let me know what you want to see I'm really open to anything before you leave this video don't forget to subscribe Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and turn on post notifications. There are so many things that you have to do nowadays, like just to follow somebody. Honestly, thank you so much you guys for your support. Hopefully, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!